Howdy, howdy, everyone. Let's get going on our four-stroke motorized bike build. This is part three. Here I'm showing you uh, how I'm, I made a template for uh, mounting the motor. I decided to go ahead and braze on a, a bracket for the motor, a mounting plate, and I used this here to uh, get the uh, center lines of all my, uh, my mounting holes here. Okay, we're ready to mount the uh, transmission to the motor. Your motor is going to mount in your bike with the, the muffler and your exhaust being to the front of the bike. This is the rear of the bike. Your transmission here, this is the T-belt transmission. Here is your clutch bell. That is going to fit over the clutch here. And it is going to mount like this here with the sprocket in the back, which is going to be underneath the carburetor. And here is our alignment point that we need to get aligned up with the sprocket on the rear end. The, spro the output sprocket from your transmission needs to be lined up with the uh, sprocket on your rear wheel. But let's go ahead and get this lined up here. You've got four mounting holes, or four threaded holes here for the screws where it's going to mount. These are the kit supplied screws here. I'm adding a lock washer just for a little bit of safety. If you have some Loctite, you can go ahead and put some Loctite on it. Use the removable Loctite, don't use the permanent Loctite. You need a 5 millimeter Allen wrench. You don't want to tighten up all the bolts. You want to leave yourself a little bit of wiggle room so you can get your screws started. Because if it's a little bit off, the odds of you stripping the screw go way, way up. I'm getting the first one just snug. And I'm going to work my way all the way around getting them just snug. And then I will go back and tighten them. You want to get these fairly tight, but then again... You don't want to get them really, really, really tight because you could strip the, uh, the screw. After snugging it, I might maybe tightening it. Okay, your kit comes with some hardware. You need to add these on, these little brackets on, so you can mount your, your pulley cover onto the uh, transmission. You have a silver bracket which has a slotted end. The slotted end is going to go into the uh, transmission plate like this here. You have three shorter screws and three longer screws. We're going to use the longer screws to mount the brackets. I'm going to use a lock washer. If you have some Loctite that has, that's a removable Loctite, you can go ahead and use that. We're going I mounted the front plate on backwards. I had to turn it around. You want to be very careful with your selection of your screw because if your screw goes into the the belt, you're going to have problems. However, with the thickness of the plastic and everything, I think we're going to be fine. I'm going to pull the bracket all the way to the front. Looks like we have a good fit. You want to take your three screws. I'm going to go ahead and start the one in front. Oh, forgot my lock washer. Because of vibration, you're going to have these screws here, you want to check them regularly to make sure that they stay on. If you have a star washer, it might work better. I'm just going to use a standard lock washer. Okay, we've got our bottom one in. I'm turning the pulley here on the inside, or you can turn it here if you have the hole in it. Everything is free, we're not rubbing. And I can see on the inside I've got plenty of uh, space between the, 
the end of the bolt and the pulley. The pulley tone turns freely. We're good to go. Okay, so here's what we want to do when we get it mounted on the bike. Now I went ahead and mounted the sprocket. Uh, click here for a link for a video that shows you how to mount the sprocket. I'm showing you how I'm doing it on a bike that I'm going to be installing a two-stroke motor on, but it's the exact same procedures. Now let's go ahead and I've got the motor uh, set on in place on my bracket. I want to get my motor lined up. That way my sprocket, the drive sprocket from the transmission, your output sprocket, lines up in a straight line with the rear sprocket because if, uh, if it's not in a straight line you're going to have some problems boys and girls. So you want to get a straight, uh, get you a, a ruler, a straight line and measure and make sure that you've got a straight line between the front and the back. And I've already brazed on my mounting brackets for the motor here and I'm using the template that I, uh, that I crafted earlier to give me my center lines for my, uh, my bolt holes where I'm going to be bolting the uh, engine to the motor. Okay, as you can see, I've got the motor mounted here. Uh, depends upon if you got the plate or whatever. But bottom line, you want to get the alignment between your output sprocket and your rear sprocket uh, in a straight line. As you can see, I've put the chain on the sprocket here. The sprocket, the output sprocket here, is a, it's a freewheeling sprocket here. It goes in one direction and then as well when the, the pulley engages from the motor, it, it turns. That way it allows you to pedal the bike. When the motor's off, I put the first link of the chain on the sprocket and I go ahead and turn it around. Nice and slow. You don't want your wheel to uh, to turn too fast which will throw your chain off. Okay, I've got it about halfway. I'm going to loop the chain underneath. And bring the chain together to see where I need to break it here. Your master link is going to take place of one of the larger links here. Uh, the one with the larger face. The, the inner links here you're going to break it at the end of an inner link here. Let's see here. We're going to have our master link take advantage, take care of that one there. And I'm thinking if we break it right here, we'll be good. So the, the master link will go in there and then I will put my chain tensioner here and that will keep things tight. That looks like a good fit. Plus I can slide the rear wheel back some. So I've got a uh, a good fit there. So I'm going to bend it over here and let's go ahead and work the chain off. Okay, I've got the chain off here. I'm going to break the chain right here at this pin. The larger face here, that is the smaller end of the chain that I'm going to discard. I have the smaller inside link which is going to be uh, be my, my uh, beginning end of the chain and here's going to be the tail end. The master link is going to take place of the, the, uh, the link here with the pins on it and it's going to go between these two here. So what we're going to do here is we're going to grind this pin down flush with the face, drive it out with a pin punch and put our master link in. Okay, I've got, a, I've got my chain broken. As you can see here, I have the two smaller inner links here. The larger link is, is the one where, where, where the pins are, are going to be going here. So my master link, or my connecting link as it's called, is going to join these two links here together. So you always want to break your chain and leave the, the smaller inside link to be the tail end of it. And your connecting link is what will fit, will join the two together. Okay, we're ready to get our pedal chain on. Let's go ahead and get it organized here. Go ahead and get your... Oh well, I knocked it off. No big deal. Put your chain on the rear sprocket. Let's go ahead and feed it to the front sprocket. There you go. 
go. What we want to do is pull the chain fairly taut here. You want to make sure that you get your wheel straight. You don't want to have your wheel cocked too much. If anything, cock your wheel a little bit towards the pedal chain because we're going to go back and we're going to take up slack on the, uh, on the drive side. I've got a pretty good tension there. Now let's go ahead, we have to install the let's go ahead, we have to install the chain tensioner, the idler on the other side. Okay, I've, we've got our chain tensioner here. We're going to bolt this onto the chain stay. The chain tensioner is going to push up against the chain and keep it tight. We've still got ah, we got a pretty good uh, tension here on the drive side on the pedal chain here so we're not going to be pulling the rear wheel back much here it's pretty much all the way up here on the back here but we can come back a little bit I intentionally have the wheel cocked a little bit as I get the chain tight I'm going as I get the axle tight I'm going to pull the wheel a little bit more towards the left side of the bike here let's go ahead and get our hardware ready with this one here you have a flat blade slot here, a slot for a flat blade screwdriver. You're going to put the screwdriver in on the other side and you're going to use that to raise and lower the arm here. Let's go ahead and get our piece fitted to the bike. As you can see we have a lock washer on here. If your kit does not have a lock washer, go ahead and get you a lock washer. And if it, it has one of these cheaper locking nuts, this is a, a, a good hex nut that's on it, but uh, some of the Chinese uh, the kits here, they, they put in a locking nut which uh, binds against the the thread if it's not the nylock nut you don't want it so get rid of it get you a regular hex nut like we got here we have a flat washer and then we have a lock washer you're going to fit your bolt through on the inside here and then you'll, you'll put your other clamp and your nut here one thing you want to be careful about is when you have your nut here you don't want to have this wheel all the way down because you'll have an issue with the the wheel rubbing against the nut. That's not going to work good for you here so you want to make sure that at, at least you have at least have the wheel pulled a little bit away from the nut that way you don't have any interference problems. Okay now you want your wheel you don't want your arm tilted in to where the wheel is riding not riding flat against the chain. So you've got your chain which is flat and then you have the flat of the wheel. You don't want your wheel cocked in or out. You want the wheel to make good contact with the chain. So if you push it in, it's going to try to push the chain in. You can also use that if you have some issues with the chain rubbing. You might be able to push it just a little bit, but for the most part, you want the chain flat against the flat part of the wheel here. So I mean, I'm, I'm exaggerating, but you see how I, have, I pulled it out here. There's no way that's going to ride properly, but you want it to where it's flat against it. Let's go ahead and slide our tensioner back and now I remember I didn't put my fender on so we got to start all over again but if nothing else now I see that everything's going to work we're not going to have any issues with the chain rubbing here on the chain stay nor are we going to have any issues with the chain rubbing on the tire or the rim so we're in good shape here Okay, I got to redo some of my work, put the fender on. We'll get we'll get back after that.